the show. A lot of congressmen really suck. But did you know that a lot of congresswomen are doing a pretty awesome thing? Last month, a bipartisan congressional coven teamed up with some of the few men in Congress who don't panic when they hear the phrase, there's been an accusation, to introduce an exciting new bill. The name of our bill is Ending Forced Arbitration of Sexual Harassment. So what is forced arbitration? Besides what I assume is a thrilling USA Network drama in its seventh season, <laughs> it's something we pay even less attention to. From day one of many jobs, that prioritization and silencing of those who come forward begins. New employee onboarding materials, as you heard, often include these mandatory arbitration clauses that employees don't even know are there. Mandatory arbitration silences victims. It limits opportunity. It protects powerful men and it breaks the leadership ladders that we are all working so hard to put in place to help women succeed. But remember, ladies, if you're going to climb those leadership ladders, make sure you don't wear a skirt. <laughs> Forced arbitration is a legal strategy that allows corporations to bypass the court system. When companies do bad stuff, they can force accusers to use a private arbitrator hired by that same company with little chance to appeal when the arbitrator rules in favor of the company, which it usually does. Just about anything you do can be subject to forced arbitration, and you might not even know it because it's buried in those terms and conditions you don't bother to read before downloading that app that tells you which fish you look like. <laughs> You've likely signed away your legal recourse for any disputes that arise if you got overcharged on your Uber or got kicked out of an Airbnb for sleeping while black or tried to get identity theft protection from that company that basically told hackers, hey, here's almost everyone's personal information, go have fun. You probably didn't even notice the forced arbitration clause at the beginning of our show, saying that by watching this program, you agree to arbitrate any complaints about trauma caused when we make you picture Mario Batali's penis having a ponytail just like the one on his head. <laughs> we can't legally show it to you, but just know that it has the beard and the Crocs, too. Forced arbitration literally takes away your legal rights. It can circumvent the courts on claims based on the Civil Rights Act, the Americans with Disabilities Act, the Family and Medical Leave Act, and the Fair Labor Standards Act. Not to mention the Don't Touch Me Act, the I'm a human being and it would be nice to be treated like one goddamn it Act, and the Jesus, this is a job, not Job of the Hutt's Pleasure Barge Act. <laughs> Forced arbitration often mandates non-disclosure agreements. Not only does that keep stories from getting out to the public, it can also prevent employees from sharing information about mutually feared creepos. And that enabled monsters like Roger Ailes to continue subjecting women to his genitals, which, might I remind you, one of his victims described as looking like raw hamburger. <laughs> Which is the more disgusting mental image? Roger Ailes' raw hamburger junk or Mario Batali's penis ponytail? <laughs> Cast your vote on Twitter, hashtag genital vomit. Gretchen Carlson finally ended Roger Ailes' reign of terror when she sued him for sexual harassment, prompting his other victims to speak out with their stories. And since leaving Fox with a reported $20 million settlement, she's become a high-profile activist for ending forced arbitration in sexual harassment cases. And though she can't appeal directly to the president on this issue because she's no longer on Fox and Friends, <laughs> she can appeal to other lawmakers by going to Capitol Hill. Sexual harassment is not partisan because women from all walks of life and politics are targeted. It's time for all of us to hold hands across the aisle and get something real done for women. That would be amazing. Now listen, you guys might not think of Gretchen Carlson as an ally, but on this issue, we agree. So she graciously sat down with me, even though we made fun of her for 12 straight years at my previous gig. <laughs> Can you tell me what happened to you? I can't tell you any of the details, unfortunately. And that's because? And that's because in society, we've chosen two ways to resolve sexual harassment cases, and they're both secret. One is settlements, where the women can never tell you what happened. Mm -hmm. And the other is forced arbitration, which is also a secret chamber, so women can never tell you what happened. So the first rule of forced arbitration is don't talk about forced arbitration. <laughs> but I can say, hypothetically, if a woman's being sexually harassed in the workplace and she has an arbitration clause, she screwed. Because see, we've been fooling our culture into thinking we had solved this problem since Anita Hill. 
because we don't hear about these stories. Mm -hmm. But the reason we don't hear about these stories is because they're going to one of two secret chambers. You can't tell me the details of your story, but I'm going to react as though you're telling me your story based on what I know about Roger Ailes. Okay. Oh, oh. Oh, that's gross. Oh my God. about right? <laughs> Can you speak to me about the bill that you're working on? What I've been doing on Capitol Hill is trying to get a bipartisan bill passed to take forced arbitration out of employment contracts on this issue. I'm very happy to say that in December I was successful in getting a bipartisan bill in the House and a bipartisan bill in the Senate to be introduced. A rare bipartisan issue. <laughs> Those are endangered these days. Very much so. I hope Don Jr. doesn't try to shoot it. <laughs> what else can we do? So people can get involved on the local level. They can change laws locally. They can change laws at the state level. They can call their members of Congress. You can also be proactive within the confines of your own workplace structure. You can get together and say, you know what, maybe we should go as a group and talk to HR and say we don't like arbitration clauses in our contracts. Mm -hmm. You can have a voice inside the workplace. If there was ever a time to do that, the time is now. Collectively, our voice is so much stronger than just one person. At this time of unprecedented discord, I think what will save the world is women coming together across party lines because they don't want to look at hamburgers.